Welcome to livingpianos.com. Robert Estrin here with a really important subject that I've been wanting to cover for a long time, which is how to learn a fugue, how to memorize a fugue. Fugues are some of the most complex examples of counterpoint. Counterpoint in contrast to most music, which has melody and harmony. Typically on the piano, you have the melody in the right hand and an accompaniment in the left hand, although not always, certainly. But whether it's a classical period like Mozart, like his here, a C major Sonata K545, where you have an obvious melody in the right hand and a broken chord in the left hand. The natural way to learn that would be to learn the right hand and get that learned in the left hand. Just basically figure out the chords. And then the chords are broken. And it's not just in Mozart. If you go, you know, into the 19th century, Chopin, his famous E flat nocturne, you've got a beautiful melody in the right hand. And here again, broken chords in a different way in the left hand. So there again, you can learn the melody and you can learn the accompaniment. And so much music is that way. But when you have a fugue, it's all these intertwining melodies. And to demonstrate this, I've chosen the C minor fugue from the Well-Tempered Clavier Book One from his monumental set of 48 Preludes and Fugues. And I'm choosing this one because it's a relatively simple fugue. And I want you to understand the methodology I'm going to show you because this could apply to all counterpoint and all fugues. So the fugue subject, the way fugues are built, you have a subject that and a counter subject and the entire fugue is built upon these elements. So the subject of the C minor fugue from book one of the Well-Tempered Clavier is as follows. And then the subject repeats, starting uh, in a different key, in the dominant. So it starts on G. While that's happening, the counter subject is introduced. Amazingly, the entire fugue is crafted from those two elements, the subject and the counter subject. The subject is of particular importance, so you want to bring out the subject wherever it occurs. So if you're playing the beginning of this, you'd want the sub, of course, that starts with us with the subject, but then when the subject returns in the dominant, you want to bring that out more than the counter subject to get a sound like this. And throughout the entire fugue, you want to bring out that fugue subject. It continues on from there. So you probably notice that I brought out that lower line where the fugue subject returns an octave lower. Well, eventually what happens, and here's where the difficulty is. Any of you who followed my YouTube channel know uh, that I learn music and teach how to learn music by digestible chunks. 
And dividing the hands separately is a great way of doing that, since if you can play each hand fluently from memory, then slow way down, you can have a good chance of being able to play the hands together and getting that memorized. But in a fugue, sometimes it's not also neat and tidy. And by the way, it's not just in fugal writing, it's also in anything that has some substantial counterpoint. So I'm going to reference now about the end of the page, you have a place where the fugue subject is divided between the two hands. So this is the way you would approach such a thing. Um, If you were to play the hands separately, you would have this in the right hand. And the left hand would have this. But in reality, you've got the fugue subject divided between the hands. So you want to learn the fugue subject, any lines that go between the hands, you want to play them that way so you're aware of it, so that when you play the hands together you can bring out that fugue subject even though it's divided between the hands. So, aside from doing hands separately, you also want to have the integrity of all the lines, so you hear them. So you must go through and not only learn the hands separately, but make sure that you follow each voice through, particularly in instances like this, where a voice is divided between the hands. You've got to hear that voice. Play it by itself so you can hear it. Then when you play the hands together, even if you do learn hands separately, you can follow through the voice and hear the voice and not hear the separate hands into themselves because they really are not complete by themselves. So this is the lesson for fugues today. It's the same methodology as learning any music with this extra element of following the counterpoint of any lines. Now this is a very simple example. Sometimes you have things that get really hairy where notes are constantly dividing between the hands and you really have to study the score so you can hear what's going on and not just abstractly learn each hand separately when it makes no sense. I hope this is helpful for you again. Robert Estrin here at livingpianos.com, your online piano resource. There's a lot of content coming your way and a lot of personal messages you're gonna be getting from us soon. So I hope you enjoy these videos. If you like them, subscribe, share them with your friends and ring the bell so more people are aware of the piano and uh, we can share the passion we all have for the instrument. See you next time.